All right, so what's going on, everybody? So I want to share with you a very interesting experience that I had last night. I believe that this message is for a specific group of people. And if you so choose to heed this warning and to really take this to the Lord, I believe it will benefit you greatly for other people. They're going to take this. They're going to just, it's just going to go over their head and they're not going to even deal with what this message is about. And I want to share with you a a series of prophetic dreams. I'm not going to go into a heavy detail of it, but there's a greater implication that I believe that the Lord was giving me throughout the day as he was reminding me for this video as I was uh, praying of what I wanted to share. And I went to bed last night early. Uh, This is very early for me, actually, 9 p.m. I went to bed. I was very tired, just went and slept. And I thought that uh, that night um, I was praying before I went to bed, uh, Lord, show me if you want to speak to me in a prophetic dream tonight, just, you know, show me in uh, typical prayers that I uh, pray. And I thought that I was just going to sleep it off, have one dream or so possibly, and just wake up and start my day early. What happened to me was that I went to bed, I had a full-blown dream, and then I woke up and I thought, oh, wow, it's probably 4 a.m. or 5 a.m. It seems... Uh, Still, you know, it's dark out, but it seems like I had a full night's rest in a sense. I was still a little bit restless. But lo and behold, as I woke up, it was only 11 p.m. And so that means I, you know, fell asleep and probably had an hour and a half or hour of sleep. And so I I took note of that. I thought, oh, that was very uh, crazy what I just, uh, you know, was given um, and just this whole night. And so I thought because I was so tired, normally I just fall right asleep and just go, uh, you know, the whole night. What happened was that I went back to bed, very tired, of course, had another full dream. And then I woke up a couple hours later, checked my clock, my phone. It was like 1 a.m. And this happened throughout the night. Every hour or a couple hours, I would have some dream and then I would wake up. And I, I, would, I counted at least four times. So probably five full sort of cycles of sleeping before times that I sort of like woke up in the middle of night. And I finally woke up uh, for good at around like five, a little over 5 a.m. And so I thought to myself, well, those are very interesting dreams. A lot of it was, and I'm not going to share all of them, but a lot of it was different situations, in some sense, very chaotic and dealing with certain people, people that I either knew from the past or just the people around me and their interactions with either me or with the world, namely with inferring and understanding the world, the, the, what I like to call your perception of reality around us. And so this is what I want to share with you because this whole day I was reminded of the evil that is in the world, the total depravity of man, the nature of man and sin. And a lot of people right away, they're going to be like, oh, wow, I don't want to hear all that stuff. What you have to realize is that in your ignorance, in my ignorance, and many people's sort of absence of seeing what's really going on in the world, we think it's better than it is. Because we see our daily life, we go to the grocery store, we go uh, to, you know, maybe your Sunday service, and you go uh, to your home, you have a a nice house, white picket fence, many of us, and uh, we just see what we see. And unless we really get into the depths of research or it's brought upon us, in front of us, the bad news of the world, the travesties that go on in life, none of us are going to really realize the wickedness, the uh, satanic things that are happening, the demonic things, even in the spiritual realm. And mind you, a lot of us maybe uh, can't discern or can't see that. But even with what's happening in the physical, what's happening in the world around us with children, with slavery, crimes against humanity, uh, death, and uh, I I mean, I just uh, sexual things, so many things that are happening in the world that people either turn a blind eye to, they mitigate, they downplay, they don't take it seriously, or they don't see that it's running rampant in the world. And what I mean by that is that it's hidden from plain sight. A lot of it sounds like conspiracy. A lot of it sounds like it's far-fetched. A lot of it sounds like it's unbelievable. Who could do that? A lot of stories coming up recently about the Epstein stuff. A lot of people talking about the tunnels underground in Gaza and many other places across the world. Many other things happening within our very borders in the U.S., in other countries. Things that elites or just the everyday person 
is suffering with, dealing with, that we don't see, that's not reported on the news. It may be out there in some forum, some deep, you know, dark web somewhere. I don't know. I'm not saying you should search those things. But this stuff is real and it exists. And I'm only saying this because a lot of us are not understanding the consequence of sin in your life, in my life. You don't have to go and look up, you know, the, the latest pedophile stuff. I'm not saying you should do that or be uh, privy to that stuff. But realizing whether it's in our heart, whether it's in just the lackadaisical, lukewarm state that many of us are in, we're not realizing and digging deeper and what really is the core nature of our heart, the core nature of how we're operating. A lot of us have lost our first love. A lot of us are being distracted. One of the dreams that I had was of somebody that I knew in the past and they were ignorant of all the stuff that was going on around them. I could see, you know, there's all these different events, different things, and it's almost like uh, this person or the people that I had witnessed were ignoring it intentionally. They were turning a blind eye or they just weren't uh, discerning enough, smart enough. They didn't have the eyes to see what was happening around them which was the fact that they just wanted to live in their own bubble. They want to live their own reality. They want to see what they wanted to see and not um, embrace and be open to what the truth is and getting deeper. They were uh, being fed baby milk. They were being lukewarm. They were being pharisaical in some sense, legalistic in some sense, or ignorant in some sense. And they they did not desire to go deeper, to have solid food, to have an open-mindedness to say, Lord, teach me, show me, humbling themselves before the Lord. And so that's why they weren't able to grow. They weren't able to get to the next level and to really see what the truth is, whether that be in your heart, circumstantially, your spiritual state, or just your perception of reality and and the truth around us. And I'm not, I'm saying you should go and figure out what this conspiracy stuff is. I'm not saying that stuff. I'm saying as you are living your life, what are you idolizing? What are you putting first? Are you putting God first? Are you putting uh, these other things in life first? There's so many distractions. And I'm not saying that all the distractions in my dream were of those things, but even the basic things. You have media, you have certain entertainment, you have certain things like aspiring to, you know, get rich or seek material things, just basic things that are distracting us from the love of God that are, that's distracting us from having a relationship with Him, that's distracting us from hearing what the Holy Spirit is trying to show us on a day-to-day basis, distracting us from giving glory, honor, and worship to God because this is what matters. The kingdom of God is what matters. Putting God first is what matters, not building your own little kingdom, not entertaining yourself in certain things all day, not having your mind fixated on whatever it is that the world is enticing you with and that you're lusting after. You have to wake up to your circumstance, your situation, your day-to-day, your hour-by-hour. You have to wake up to what's going on in the world. Do not be ignorant of Satan's devices. Do not be ignorant of what he's trying to do to distract you on all fronts of life and to uh, get out of this paradigm that has held us hostage for so long. This is what I want to warn you about. This is what you have to be reminded of. And I believe that if you so uh, choose to desire spiritual things, godly things, that He can awaken you. He can show you these things. And as much as all these dreams that I had, a lot of it were uh, sickening, disgusting, some of the stuff that was revealed and shown. But in respect to the people that were seeing it or witnessing it, there was a lot of ignorance. There was a lot of blocking out of these things. There was not a lot of interaction in some sense in fighting in, in the spiritual, taking up arms, right? The, the armor of God and doing something with what God has steward you, stewarded you with. You have a calling in your life. You have to step up. You cannot be a coward. You cannot sink into your chair to do whatever you want to do. God has a plan for your life. God has a plan for the body of Christ, and He's calling us to step up in this hour. Many of us are going to be interrupted, like I was interrupted with all these different things throughout the night. But God will strengthen you. He will give you the rest. I still got a full night's rest. I was still good to go. 
but I was seeking more. I was seeking truth. I, wa I wanted to be open. Yes, I have my flaws. Yes, sometimes I feel inadequate. Yes, I know that I need to rely on God for all the things that I have to do. But what God wants to do, what God wants to, um, to use in our life is our desire to want to humble ourselves before Him so that He can work through us, so that we can be a vessel. He can be a vessel through us that we can be used for His purposes. So this is what matters right now. A lot of us going into the end times, we're not serious. We're not urgent. We're not taking our faith seriously. So please, take this to the Lord. Ask yourself, where are you right now? And if you are in a place for which even this motivates you, encourages you, gives you exhortation to your next step in life, let that be. Let it be so. For others, however this is received, may it be received in a, uh, in a constructive way, in a blessing sort of way, in a godly way. Love you guys. Talk to you guys very soon.